look, this is not where I was going to start this video. I have plans. We'll go do what I had planned, but look at this. If I'm giving a weekly play-by-play, -play, look at this sweet little poppy. The year that we moved in, when we did all this work on the Euro Village, we were cutting down trees and just getting rid of chaos. This poppy was growing in the middle of the woods and I scooped it up and popped it right here and it's blooming and it's so beautiful. Hello lovelies, I'm Angela and this is Parisian Farm Girl. Bienvenue and welcome to my channel. It is week three of the Potager Garden Tours and today I'm going to be answering some questions that you sent me over on Instagram. So I think I'll do this every couple weeks, take your questions and see if I can help you with some of your own gardening dilemmas. Now, I don't know about you, but I love summer. I live for this. Everything in my life, in my heart, seems to come alive. I have more energy, I increase my workouts, I have more fun cooking in the kitchen. Next week, I am going to have a riot. I am taking 12 Old World Design Society members on our very first flea market excursion. This is their swag bag. I think it's very chic, navy and cream, my favorite colors and the colors of the Old World Design Society. If you're not a member yet, you should definitely do that because next year we're going to Paris together. We're doing more flea markets here in the States. We're going to have a lot of fun. Let's start with question number one. I did receive a question on how to care for roses and specifically how to address problems with roses. And if you'd like more, be sure you have a copy of the summer edition of the Old World Design Society magazine because I did write an entire article on roses and companion planting with roses, which is something I love to do in that edition. It's not quite rose season here in Northern Wisconsin, but I can give you a few ideas. Of course, I can't cover everything. There are complete books written about the art of caring for roses, but I will tell you a few things that I do. In the fall, I do prune them pretty good. I try to make sure that there are no branches crossing so there's no rubbing action as they grow next year. If there are branches that just look sort of weak and spindly, I try to take those out completely so the energy can go to the bigger ones. In the spring, as my children are eating bananas as their snack, I always tell them, run outside and bury your banana peel underneath a rose. As we know, those peels are full of potassium and the roses really love that. I feed them in the spring and then I'll do that again throughout the season, but not too late in the season because towards the end of the season, I don't want to give the energy to the blooms. I want that energy to go down to the roots so they can have a lot of support for the winter. Now, a mistake I always make with my roses is really underestimating how big everything is going to get. They don't like a lot of competition. So if you have, for example, a shrub growing right next to your rose or a boxwood, something where the roots grow out, you're going to want to move that or just keep in mind that those roots are going to give the rose a bit more competition than she wants. So this Desdemona here is surrounded by the snow in summer and selenius milkweed that needs to come out. So as soon as the snow in summer is done, I'll prune that back and just sort of give her a little breathing room. It happens all the time. These all came up from seed right on top of this rose here. So I'll let them bloom and then they're going to be really pruned back hard so the rose can have plenty of space to do what she wants to this summer. This is one of the many perils of gardening. First of all, your fingernails are always trashed. I wear that with pride. This one, not so much my filmer. My daughter just uh, informed me that I have mitten hands. It happens every year where I end up having really white hands and tan arms, and that will get much more distinct as the season goes.
That last question about roses was from Lauren over on Instagram. And this question is from Martha. Now, Martha is a local. She knows the struggles of planting here in Door County. We have about this much topsoil and the quality is really, really bad. And she's wondering if I enrich my soil. Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Well, let's go talk to Fern about that. Fernie, come and see me. Fern is not coming out. She loves her fan in fly season. But thanks to Fern and all of our other barnyard animals who are going to compete for audio here, we have plenty of compost. So it's just a matter of keeping it in all its separate piles and making sure that it's aged enough. And then we top dress the beds with that every fall. Now, of course, not everyone lives on a farm, so if you don't have compost bins and a way to provide your garden with its own compost, check Craigslist. Farmers are always happy to get rid of their piles of compost. I bet you could rent a trailer, scoop some up, and bring it home and amend your soil this fall. Geraldine on Instagram had a very, very valid question. How do I keep this space watered? Up until recently, it has been a pain. I cannot stand lugging a hose around. We don't have built-in sprinklers. I can't stand the look of the hose, just looped and laying everywhere. I can't stand getting it out of my way when it's time to mow or edge. And so I have found the solution in my new retractable hose reels. They are made by Giraffe Tools. Last week I shared with you my greenhouse. So as I have new tools, new toys in the garden, I'm going to share them with you because I know you're going to ask me in the comments. So this retractable hose I got from Giraffe Tools. I love it. It stretches 130 feet so I can take it clear out into the garden and when I'm done I can just give it a tug and it winds back up. The kids think it's hysterical. Mom doesn't have to look at any hoses. Sometimes the charm of the watering can doesn't cut it. Now I love to scoop this down into the pond and water. I have a lot of annuals down in the lavender beds. I'm going to answer a question on lavender in a second. But um, the kids are always freaking out that I'm gonna scoop up the tadpoles. So this is it. There's one here and one in the back. It's retractable, 120 feet, really easy uh, nozzle here, lots of different settings. I find it really therapeutic to come out in the evenings, the early evenings, and just water. After everything is cleaned up, I can just sort of walk around the garden, putts around. The kids love the retractable aspect of it. I can go this way and go 130 feet that way. I can go this way and go 130 feet that way. It's fabulous. And there are no hoses looped up in the deep gravel. So it's super sexy. Love it. This was a really, really good choice for the garden. I'm trying to make everything as the gardens are getting bigger and we're expanding, we're doing what I'm calling operation wraparounds. We're going all the way around the house. I'm trying to get it really manageable. So as the kids are getting older and they're busier and they're not helping me as much, I can maintain this space. And that's what my next question is about. Someone asked me if I have help in my garden. got some little snapdragons over in this corner. That's something that I do is I fill in bare spots with annuals, but boy, it's really hard to gauge uh, where to put them. And sure enough, the perennials grow and they fill in and my annuals are always a little cramped for space. So I try to make sure they stay watered. I scooch the perennials back a little bit so they have room to do what they're going to do.
let's talk about that. Do I have help in my gardens? Yes and no. Obviously, my family helps me as they can. Joel's very helpful. He mows, he weed whips, he does the edging when I can't get to it. I do love to use my weed whipper. And the kids and their sweet little fingers are very handy at pulling weeds. But I don't have professional help. And that's something I, as a gardener, need to keep in mind that what I'm dealing with, this is my hobby. I have to embrace all aspects of it because the garden will never be exactly the way I want it to be. But the truth is that's the appeal because gardening is a hobby and it is a passion. It's not landscaping, it's not static. It's about something that's always ebbing and flowing, something that's always changing and evolving and morphing. That's one of the reasons I want to share the garden with you every week this summer because like I said last week, every time I step out into this space, it's a new garden. So it's not about just getting it perfect. Even though after a full day out here, when everything does look really tidy, that feels really good. The truth is there's always a pocket, there's always a bed, there's always a problem, something that needs to be done, something that needs to be attended to, whether it's hardscaping like the pond, you've seen the rubber tarp showing for the last year on part of that pond, or it's that bed that we didn't properly put enough cardboard down and so the weeds are always creeping through. So to that Instagram follower that asked me, do I have help? Yes, but no. And I have decided that as fantastic as that would be, I am okay with that. I'm going to water a few more things and we're going to take a one minute break for the sponsor of this video. Thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. Audible is the most used app on my phone. I'm an avid reader and so I can tick off even more books than I would normally have time for. I love to listen to audiobooks on my Audible app. As a Parisian Farm Girl viewer, you can enjoy a 30-day free trial by texting the words Parisian Farm Girl to 500-500 or simply click the link in this video description. May I make a recommendation? I recently and thoroughly enjoyed listening to Jane Eyre as narrated by Tandy Newton. Her ability to capture the essence of each character with her magnificent voicing was absolutely incredible. If Jane Eyre is a favorite for you, you should definitely listen to the Tandy Newton version of it on Audible. With every month, Audible members get one free audiobook and full access to the Plus catalog. As an Audible member, you'll have access to Audible Originals, Guided Fitness, Sleep Tracks for Better Rest, and podcasts like my own podcast, Homemaker Chic. So click the link in this video description or simply text the words Parisian Farm Girl to 500 500. Jacqueline over on Instagram wanted to know what were the very first plants that we planted in our garden. And actually they are plants that I found right here on the property. This house had sat empty for five years and behind the house you could tell that a garden used to be there. It was completely overgrown. The weeds were about three feet tall. But in amongst those weeds, I found plenty of lupine, or as they say on Gardener's World, lupin. They are doing magnificently these years later, now that they've been freed from the claustrophobia of the weeds, they are one of the highlights of our spring garden. Now, a mistake I always make with my roses is underestimating how big everything is going to get. So this, what are we, what are we doing? Building a subdivision? Now, a mistake I always make with my roses, I'm gonna do that again. I'm so distracted by all that racket. 
Thank you so much for joining me for this spring and summer 2022 Potager Gardening Series. This was week three. I will be back with more. I would love it if you stayed a little while on the channel and got caught up on how this garden was created right here. And of course, that you join the Old World Design Society. You can do a basic membership or enjoy a print or digital magazine. Click the white circle right here. And I will see you again very soon. A bientôt.